Hi everyone, I'm Miss Sharon. I am from the Hardin County Public Library. I'm the outreach librarian and today I am coming to you from my story time closet. I'm gonna do story time from here. I'm wearing my favorite sweatshirt. It says H-O-M-E home because I am trying to stay healthy at home and I hope you are too. Okay, let's get our waving hands out so we can say hello. We say hello like this. We say hello like this. Hi, hello, and how are you? We say hello like this. We say hello like this. We say hello like this. Hi, hello, and how are you? We say hello like this. Okay, we're gonna warm up our hands with the rhyme called Two Little Butterflies. It's like two little blackbirds, but we're gonna use butterflies. So we need two hands, one, two, and they're gonna be butterflies. So it goes like this. Two little butterflies sitting on a hill. One named Jack, the other named Jill. Fly away, Jack, fly away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. Good. Two little butterflies sitting on a cloud. One name soft, the other name loud. Fly away, soft. Fly away, loud. Come back, soft. Come back, loud. Two little butterflies sitting on a stick. One name name slow, the other name quick, fly away slow, fly away quick, come back slow, come back quick. Two little butterflies fly up to the sky, one name low, the other name high, fly away low, fly away high. Come back low. Come back high. Hi. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. A Flannel Board Story. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. On Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. 
He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and... He was a beautiful butterfly. And that's the end. I'm going to teach you a song about a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly. And at the end of the song, we're going to use the American Sign Language sign for butterfly. So let me show you how to do that. So you need to cross over your arms, link your thumbs together, and then you're going to bend your fingers so they look like wings that are flapping. There you go. Now it looks like a butterfly. Good job. But first, we're going to start with a caterpillar. So you need one finger. You need to lay it on its side. And can you make it crawl? There you go. And this is how our story starts. Our song starts. Fuzzy, wuzzy caterpillar crawling on the ground. Fuzzy, wuzzy caterpillar never makes a sound. Shh. He builds a house around himself. In it he will lie. When he wakes up, then he will be a lovely butterfly. Bye-bye. So this story is called Caterpillar Dreams by Clyde McFarlane. And if you look at the cover, you can see some flowers. And on top of the flower in the middle is a little caterpillar. Look, he's stretching that pie. And here's a bumblebee. And I know that bumblebees are really tiny. And this caterpillar is not much longer than that bumblebee. So this picture shows me that this caterpillar must be really, really small. What do you think? And here's our title page. And not only does it say that Clive McFarlane is the author, meaning he wrote all the words, but it says this story was also illustrated by him, which means he drew all the pictures. And here's a picture he drew of the caterpillar on a rock. And can you find the caterpillar in this picture? Whoa, he's all the way at the top of the tree. Boy, I bet it took a long time to crawl up there. And here's the beginning of our story. So it looks like, what, a garden? And there's the caterpillar on top of the flower, just like on the cover. And he's watching the bees as they fly around. What do you think he's thinking? Let's find out. It says Henry has a dream. He wants to fly. Did you guess that that's what he was thinking? His whole life, he's wanted to see the world outside his garden. Night and day, Henry dreams of going on amazing incredible, impossible seeming adventures. But Henry is just a little caterpillar. Ooh, look how little he is. And how is a little caterpillar ever going to see all that the world has to offer? And I'm gonna let you see how teeny tiny he looks against the garden wall. Wow, he really is small, isn't he? His friends don't want Henry to leave the garden. It's safe here, says Snail. It's where your friends are, Worm tells him. Seriously, Henry, an adventure? Sounds exhausting, Slug says with a sigh. Only Toad understands. Here's the thing with dreams, Henry. If you don't chase them, 
They always get away. Henry is determined not to let his dreams get away. Hi, bird. I want to go on an amazing, incredible, impossible seeming adventure. Will you take me? I'm waiting for my eggs to hatch, but I can help you get over the wall, sings Bird. Perfect, says Henry. And look, there they go. But on the other side of the wall is a busy road. Hi, Mole. I'm going on an amazing, incredible, impossible seeming adventure. Can you help me? Ask Henry. I can't go on an adventure today. I need to finish my tunnel under the road. Mole mumbles. That's okay. I'll help, says Henry. Look, he's helping him. But on the other side of the road is a big, big lake. Hello, fish. I'm going on an amazing, incredible, impossible seeming adventure. Want to come along? Oh, I could never leave my lake, but I'm happy to help you cross. Awesome, says Henry. Look, he's helping him across. Henry flew over a wall, burrowed under a road, and crossed a lake. But still, his adventure had barely even begun. Then, far ahead, Henry sees something he's never seen before. Do you know what it is? Can you tell? I can see the tree, but what's behind that tree? A giant balloon! This is where my amazing, incredible, impossible seeming adventure will begin. Henry just knows it. Would you get inside that balloon? If he can get to the top of the balloon, Henry will be able to see the whole wide world. But before Henry reaches the top, Something happens to him. A cocoon starts to form around him. He tries to wiggle and squiggle his way free, but he can't move. Henry is stuck. His dream is going to get away. It is dark in the cocoon and warm. Henry can't help but fall asleep. But while he sleeps, something happens that is more amazing than any dream. What happens? I bet you already know. Henry wakes and pokes his head out of the cocoon. He is riding the balloon high in the sky. Henry knows he should be scared, but he isn't. Henry has become a butterfly. He has wings. He can fly. He can go anywhere. So where does Henry go? Oh, look, let's follow the line that traces his flight. It starts over here. He goes over the tree, comes down, he makes a loop. He goes down and around and makes another loop. And then he's down on this side of the pond, around the pond and up in the sky again and makes a loop. And then he goes this way. Where does he go? Can you guess? Home. The most amazing incredible, impossibly possible place of all. Home is my favorite place. How about you? Never stop chasing your dreams. And that's the end.
What a nice story. Thank you for being good listeners. This rhyme is one that you can do with a scarf and it's lots of fun. So if you wanna pause the video right now and go get a scarf, I'll wait. If you don't have a scarf, you can use your hands and I'll teach you how to do that. Um, the first thing you're gonna need is the butterfly sign. So remember, cross your arms, entwine your thumbs, and then bend your fingers like wings flapping. So this is how the rhyme goes. Flying through the air, what a beautiful sight. Butterfly wings have taken flight. First they fly up high, makes them go way high. Then they fly down low, you can make yours go way low. Then they fly round and round before they go. Okay, so now let's do it with a scarf. I have this scarf here, and I'm gonna start with both hands on the scarf, but you can do it with one or two hands, it's up to you. You could even do two scarves if you want to. All right, so here we go. Flying through the air, what a beautiful sight. Butterfly wings have taken flight. First they fly up high. Then they fly down low, and you can make yours go way low. Then they fly round and round before they go. And you can just throw yours up in the air. Let it go. Okay, it's time to get out our waving hands again and say goodbye. We say goodbye like this. We say goodbye like this. Bye, so long, and see you next time. We say goodbye like this. We say goodbye like this. We say goodbye like this. Bye, so long, and see you next time. We say goodbye like this. Bye-bye.